Welcome to Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the controversial no-vax, no-ride policy on public transportation. Our road safety reminder in the Young Street Smart Sports and Centers on the right of way of vehicles on the right. This week's Pai and Chuper shall be about the importance of wearing seatbelts. The public service segment centers on a reaction to the reported hidden bike lane. Showcase this week shall have the seven-seater SUV from Geely, the Oka Vanka Urban. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management as well as developments in the automotive industry are on this edition of Motoring Today. Join us! I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. The Mitsubishi Strata Athlete, confident to the core. Sa pinakamatitinding krisis at sakuna, isang mukha ang parating nakikita, nakatutok sa solusyon, kahit noon pa man, parating mabilis ang tugon. Yan ang tapat na pinuno. Lenny Robredo, gobyernong tapat ang at buhay lahat. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. Authorities continue to make it easier for transport workers and commuters to get vaccinated. The DOTR and the MMD held a mobile COVID-19 vaccination drive for commuters and transport workers at the Baranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange, or PITX, over five days from January 24 to 28. The vaccination drive was open to commuters, transport workers, and other individuals looking to get vaccinated with registrations to be done on site. According to Transportation Secretary Artogade, it is important to vaccinate all transport workers whose work necessarily takes them to various places where they can get into contact with commuters and others daily. The five-day vaccination drive, dubbed as We Vax as One, mobile vaccination drive aimed to vaccinate at least 500 individuals daily using the AstraZeneca vaccine brand as first, second, or booster doses. It is only right that authorities make it easier for people to get vaccinated, even as it mandates such policies as no vax, no ride, and limiting entry at malls to those with proof of vaccination. The EDSA busway, aka the EDSA carousel, is proving to be an efficient mode of public transport, if the numbers are to be believed. The EDSA busway ferried more than 47 million passengers, averaging to 129,000 passengers daily in 2021, according to data reported by the LTFRB. The agency said transport operators participating in the EDSA busway initiative of the DOTR recorded ferrying more than 2 million commuters for the first three months of 2021, 2 million in January, 2.3 million in February, and 2.4 million in March, while 1.6 million was recorded in April. EDSA busway's ridership increased in May with 2.6 million commuters. Ridership in the months of July and August reached 3.6 million and 2.2 million, respectively, while in September, the EDSA busway recorded over 3.8 million commuters. In October, the ridership data was recorded at 6.4 million, 7.4 million in November, and 7.6 million in December. The EDSA busway allowed the DOTR to provide free public transport to medical frontliners and essential workers. While the service contracting program helped transport operators to earn revenues to sustain operations during the pandemic. DOTR Secretary Artogada said the EDSA busway provided an efficient and organized transport system that benefited millions. The busway restricted buses to the median lanes for much of EDSA, which helped cut bus travel time from the Mall of Asia in Pasay City to Monumento in Caloca to just around an hour from two to three hours pre-pandemic. There is a sense that the EDSA busway can be more efficient and can benefit more commuters with some fine-tuning and adjustments. 
The DOTR took exception to reports that seemed to show that it was backpedaling from its no vax no ride policy in public transport in the national capital region by exempting essential workers. The DOTR has issued a public statement clarifying new reports that it's issued exemptions to its no vax no ride entry policy for Metro Manila following some complaints after it was implemented beginning on January 17. The DOTR said that giving exemptions to essential workers is not a new protocol. It pointed out that earlier announcements and department orders on the policy clearly stated that exempted, which are the following. Persons with medical conditions that prevented their full COVID-19 vaccination, as shown by a duly signed medical certificate with the name and contact details of their doctor and persons who will buy essential goods and services, such as but not limited to food, water, medicine, medical devices, public utilities, energy, work, and medical and dental necessities, as shown by a duly issued Barangay Health Pass or other proof of justified to travel. These exemptions are in line with IATF guidelines on those who are allowed to work in essential industries under Alert Level 3, the DOTR said. The DOTR said that these exemptions have been cascaded to enforcers on ground who are monitoring compliance of the no vax no ride policy. It is hoped that it is clear to enforcers about who are exempted and what they need to show to avail of the exemptions. More on this controversial policy on Motoring Forum. Work on many road improvement projects continue to be fast-tracked by the DPWH. The project to widen Lawton Avenue from a four-lane to a six-lane thoroughfare in Taguig City is expected to be completed as scheduled by the second quarter of 2022. Already completed is the 1.34-kilometer Phase 1 of the project from 5th Avenue to Bayani Road. It is now benefiting motorists. DPWH Secretary Roger Mercado said the department is expediting the completion of the remaining two phases of the project, with Phase 2 covering 1,100 lineal meters from Bayani Road to Philippine Navy and Phase 3 covering 240 lineal meters from Philippine Navy to Pasong Tamo Extension. The DPW said that when completed by the second quarter of the year, the widened lot and avenue will help decongest traffic in nearby EDSA, the South Superhighway, and C5 Road. A widened lot and avenue will also complement the 961.427 lineal meter Bonifacio Global City or Tiga Center Link Road project, which has improved access to and from the cities of Taguig, Pasig, Makati, and Mandaluyo. Helping ease traffic congestion in Metro Manila takes more than kilometers long elevated tollways. Short, Wide, strategic roadways with links to major thoroughways like Lawton Avenue would greatly help. Those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. Government and health authorities are desperately looking for ways to curb the exponential rise in COVID-19 cases. And one solution they came up with is the no-vaccination, no-ride policy on public transport. Motoring Forum takes on the topic that seems to be fraught with controversy. When anti-COVID-19 vaccinations became available last year, authorities took to encouraging people to get vaccinated, offering many incentives including offering vaccinated APORs free rides on public transport. The entry of a new, more infectious but less virulent variant of COVID-19 sparked an exponential rise in cases and prompted the IATF to raise Alert Level 3 in Metro Manila in hopes of stopping or controlling the surge. But with the surge continuing to break records almost daily, authorities have gone a step further, implementing a no-vaccination, no-ride policy in public transport in Metro Manila as long as it remains under Alert Level 3 or higher. The order came from the top, according to the DOTR. The president himself wants a policy implemented. The Metro Manila Council soon followed with the resolution, putting the policy into effect, with the mayors also urged to issue respective ordinances. The DOTR defended the policy, saying that this is meant to protect all, whether vaccinated or unvaccinated individuals, to safeguard those that are most at risk, our healthcare system, and our exhausted medical workers amidst the recent surge of COVID-19 cases recorded in the country. The policy is also intended to prevent another public transport shutdown while keeping public transport operations safe and running. The Department of Industry or DTI supports a policy saying this is needed as a surge in cases could severely affect industries. In a press statement, the DTI was reported to have said, If we do not act now, all industries and business sectors will be severely affected. Either the businesses will minimize workers, cut down on some parts of their business, retrench employees, or shut down to cut down losses or pay off debts. Authorities anticipated the policy will spark objections and criticisms about it being draconian, anti-poor, or punitive. No Vax No Ride proponents argued that it is more anti-poor and anti-life if we will not impose interventions that will prevent loss of life due to non-vaccinations. The DOTR made clear that there is no restriction against traveling for the unvaccinated. 
unvaccinated individuals are allowed to travel by using other means aside from public transport, it said. It also cited exemptions to the no-ride, no-vaccination policy, exempted are persons with medical conditions that prevent their full COVID-19 vaccination and those who go out to buy essential goods and services. But these exempted persons need to provide proof, such as a duly signed medical certificate with the name and contact details of their doctor, for medical exemptions or duly issued Barangay Health Pass or other proof to justify travel. The DOTR warns public transport operators that disobeying the policy are considered violations of applicable general safety and health provisions under any concession or service agreements, authority, or permits to operate. Despite the warning, some PV drivers are saying they won't strictly comply with the policy, saying they already aren't earning enough even before the policy was thought of. There's also the question of how the transport agencies will monitor and enforce compliance by transport operators of the no-vaccine, no-ride policy. The jury is still out on whether the no-vax, no-ride policy will help curb the surge in COVID-19 cases. The numbers reported daily by the DOH are still not encouraging. That's our Motoring Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Mitsubishi Strata athlete, confident to the core. Sa mga tilik natin ngayon, iisa lang ang leader na magpapagaling sa ating mga suga. Kapag ang pinuno ay tapat, walang tiwali, walang mga api. Patas ang laban. Sapat ang kabuhayan. Thank you po. Sabay-sabay po nating tuparin ang ating mga pangarap para maging kulay rosas ang ating bukas. You are back with us here on Motoring Today. In line with our lifelong commitment to promote road safety, here is this week's road safety tip in cooperation with Toyota Motor Philippines. If you are stopped at an intersection, paunahin ang sasakyan na nasa kanan dahil ito ay may right of way. It is important to keep this in mind for smooth travel. More motoring tips for you here on Motoring Today. Proper driver's demeanor while behind the wheel from Mitsubishi Motors Philippines. Payong super lang kaibigan. Ako si Alejandro Patosa, isang kapwa niyo super. Huwag kalimutan magsuot ng seatbelt sa tuwing kayo ay papasada. Gawing prioridad ang kaligtasan habang namamasada sa pamamagitan ng pagsusuot ng seatbelt. Siguraduhin maayos at gumagana ang iyong seatbelt bago mamasada. Huwag mo rin kalimutan paalalahanan ang pasahero na nakaupo sa harap na magsuot ng seatbelt. Tandaan ang paggamit ng seatbelt ay isang tiktibong pamamaraan o pangmanatiling ligtas sa oras na anumang aksidente. Ito po si Alejandro Patosa. Payong super lang kaibigan mula sa isang kapwa nyo super. The Mitsubishi Strata athlete, confident to the core. To overtake the world, we all need a sense of greatness. Greatness that's powerful enough to change the world. Greatness that exudes intelligence. With the brains behind the brawn. With flaring passion 
and a taste for style. That's greatness accelerated. The all new Honda Civic, now with Honda Sensing. Sa mga tinik natin ngayon, iisa lang ang leader na magpapagaling sa ating mga suga. Alam natin na kapag ang pinuno ay tapat, walang tiwali, walang mang-aapi. Kahit sino ka man, patas ang laban. Sa pamilya, sa patang kabuhayan. Thank you po. Sabay-sabay po natin to pa rin ang ating mga pangarap para maging kulay rosas ang ating bukas. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next. We start with the latest news and developments. Local motorsports organizers, racing circuit owners, and operators and other stakeholders have met with the Automobile Association of the Philippines Motorsports Department to discuss plans for the 2022 motorsports season. Dubbed as the 2022 Motorsports Season Alignment Meeting, the discussions were held online and were participated in by Ivan Asada and Jahan Kalam of AAP Motorsport Officials of Batangas Racing Circuit, Clark International Speedway and Cart Plaza, Eileen Orgelias and Ferdy Ong of Twasan Racing, and Danny Santiago of Philippine Autocross Championship Series. While we and motorsports stakeholders await the relaxation of government-mandated COVID-19 restrictions, the plans discussed during the meeting should be soon finalized and announced. And that's this week's World of Motorsports. Motoring Today continues right after this break. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. with the Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Welcome back to Motoring Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. Man Automotive Concessionaires Corporation, more known as MACC, has partnered with Volkswagen Truck & Bus to distribute VW commercial vehicles in the local market. VW Truck & Bus was established in Brazil back in 1981 to manufacture and distribute trucks and buses under the Volkswagen mark. Today, VW Truck & Bus distributes commercial vehicles to more than 30 countries in Latin America, Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. MACC said VW Truck & Bus produces a complete line of vehicles, tailor-made to the needs of the customer from light to heavy trucks and buses capable of meeting the most varied applications and requirements of various markets. The BW lineup includes categories 3, 4, and 5 trucks ranging from 9 tons to 31 tons in 4x2, 4x4, 6x4, 8x2, and 8x4 executions, all powered by popular Cummins and MAN engines mated to either 6-speed, 9-speed, or 16-speed transmissions. Kia Philippines has confirmed that it will soon be offering the all-new Carnival in the local market. Kia says the fourth-generation Carnival, named the best minivan by premier global media company Newsweek during its 2021 Autos Awards, will be available in Kia dealerships in the first quarter of 2022. The Kia Carnival will also receive top honors in the transportation category in the 2021 Good Design Awards, organized by Chicago Athenaeum, Museum of Architecture and Design, and the European Center for Architecture, Art, Design, and Urban Studies. Kia Philippines is saving more detailed features of the Carnival for future announcements, but did say its luxurious minivan will have power tailgate and sliding doors, second row seats with automatic legress, and automated sliding sunroof.
It's been 13 years since Lexus set up shop in the Philippines, opening a gateway to what it calls unparalleled luxury for the most discerning Filipino car buyers. Today, Lexus offers a lineup of luxury sedans, coupes, crossovers, and SUVs that not only showcase the latest in cutting-edge technology, but also exhibit the artistry of Takumi, master craftsman. In celebrating its 13th year in the Philippines, Lexus points to milestones that include the recent launch of the new LS, the newest variant of the Lexus IS, and the ES. Lexus also highlights that it has one of the most number of hybrid variants among premium luxury brands in the country. Lexus also launched the My Lexus mobile app, which makes owning and maintaining a Lexus easier and more convenient. Toyota Motor Philippines has announced that its dealerships are now accepting reservations for the new RAV4 HEV. Toyota said the new RAV4 HEV, the second hybrid SUV in its local lineup, will be available at Toyota dealerships by February. This comes after the local launch of the Toyota Camry HEV in December. Toyota now offers five hybrid models in the local market comprising of the Prius, Corolla Altis, Corolla Cross, Camry, and the RAV4. According to Sherwin Chua Lim, Toyota Motor Philippines' first vice president for vehicle sales operations, the succession of Toyota's HEV model introductions in the country indicates that hybrid cars are now mainstream. He added that Filipinos are now ready for energy-efficient mobility options, but less emissions and hybrids offer choices that are practical and ready to use in existing infrastructure and road conditions. Prices for the Toyota RAV4 ATV starts at 2,157,000 pesos. Our Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. This edition of Showcase takes a look at the Okavango Urban, the middle variant of Geely Philippines' entry in the highly competitive local 7-seater MPV SUV market. Geely Philippines is steadily growing its presence in the local crossover, SUV and MPV markets with a lineup that includes the Cool Ray, the Ascara, and the Okavango. While the Cool Ray is Geely's bestseller, the Ascara and the Okavanco are benefiting from the subcompact crossover's surprising success, helping generate awareness and interest for Geely's bigger models. The Okavango in particular got to be mentioned in the mix of good value for money options in the midsize 7 seater MPV SUV market. When first launched, the Okavango is touted by Geely as a game changing entry in the segment dominated by Toyota's Innova. Indeed, the Okavango had the looks, with Geely's distinctive expanding Cosmos grille, space, technology and comfort and convenience features to get serious consideration from those looking for 7-seater MPVs or SUVs. At 4,835mm long, 1,900mm wide, and 1,785mm tall, with a 2,185mm long wheelbase and 194mm ground clearance, the Okavango straddles that thin divide between MPV and SUV. Geely first brought in two trim levels of the Okavango, a comfort and urban and later rolled out the Urban Plus, which mainly just added a 60-inch panoramic sunroof plus upgrades to headlamps and digital instrument panel. But this car review is all about the Geely Okavango Urban, which comes with all LED lighting fixtures, headlamps with automatic control, and daytime running lights, front and rear fog lamps. The lift gate in the Urban is powered for greater convenience. So are the side mirrors that are heated and out of folds. The rear spoiler comes with a center high mount stop lamp. Differentiating the Urban from the Comfort are chromed outside door handles and roof rails as well as the two-tone aluminum alloy wheels wrapped by 225-55R18 tires. The Okavango interior looks and feels premium with soft surfaces strategically placed among the hard plastics. This is especially true in the Urban even with the PVC leather upholstery. In the Urban, both driver and front passenger seats are powered six ways for the driver and four ways for the passenger. The expansive center console with a shifter, electronic parking brake control look classy and high-tech and functional all at the same time. The double-layer console hides a good-sized cubbyhole. Up front is a dash with a 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster as well as the 10.3-inch touchscreen multimedia with the QD link for smart connectivity with mobile phones. The system allows for playing of music and video, and is integrated with 360-degree view cameras that should help with parking and dealing with narrow lanes and ramps that are the bane of driving long and wide MPVs. The second row has three individual seats that can fold separately. The third row seat for two splits and folds 
The second and third row seats fold completely to provide as much as 2,050 liters of space for luggage and other cargo. With 19 seat configurations, the Okavanka provides a lot of possible options for taking on passengers and cargo. Complementing this are the 42 storage nooks and compartments that make the Okavanko just perfect for family trips, especially for those with children which come with the IS. Making it comfortable in long drives is a triple zone air conditioning system that comes with ceiling vents for the third row. The Okavanko is among the first to equip its air conditioning system with CN95 filters, perfect for these COVID-19 times. All Okavanka variants are powered by the same mild hybrid powertrain that features a 1.5-liter turbocharged 3-cylinder gasoline engine and 48-volt electric motor synergy system that together generates a maximum of 190 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque. This hybrid engine sends power to the front wheels via a 7-speed wet dual-clutch transmission system. Despite being a fuel-saving mild hybrid system powering a large-ish and heavy-ish people carrier, the Okavango can be a perky drive-in sport mode, one of three modes drivers can set, the others being Eco where the engine earns off while coasting and comfort. The suspension system featuring front McPherson struts and torsion beams in the rear absorbs road imperfections well enough, body roll and switchbacks are minimized. Ride and handling is best described as solid and predictable on the light and easy side with linear stopping power provided by an all-wheel disc brake system, ventilated in front and solid in the rear. It's a common theme in today's almost cutthroat competition for vehicle sales, but the Okavanko does a superb job of providing as much top-end comfort and convenience driver assist and safety tech and features for every peso in the SRP. The Okavanko Urban comes with push start and yes, remote start, if you like the engine warmed up by the time you get inside. It is also a Kevin anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, hill descent control, electronic stability control, immobilizer, and tire pressure monitor. Aside from the 3-point ELR seat belts for all, the Urban also comes with dual airbag, side and credit airbag, ISOFIX anchors, and rear parking sensors. Finally, Geely is confident enough about the build quality of the Urban as well as its other offerings to offer a 5-year and 150,000 km warranty. The number of Geely Okavango now on the road is a sure sign that hybrids can now be considered part of the mainstream. That's our featured vehicle on this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's Auto Insurance Program. 100% worry-free driving. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Live Extra with the Mitsubishi Expander Cross. the lead. The Mitsubishi Strata Athlete, confident to the core. We now have our segment that dwells on the wide array of motoring problems, not only in the metro, but all over the country as well. This is where we present problems referred to us or we ourselves see and hope to fully find solutions for. Our public service segment is next. 
concerned motorist has reached out to us to report about what he calls a hidden bike lane and an unfair traffic violation call in 9th Avenue, Bonifacio Global City in Taguig. According to him, the city's implementation on the use of bike lanes are done very poorly, leading to drivers committing traffic violations which could have been avoided. In his explanation, there is a bike lane along 9th Avenue that is not obvious, and there are also no signs that you are indeed entering a bike lane when turning right. It also confused him that a sign that says, Turn right at any time with care is present in the area. Right this way. It's okay, we're almost there. We'll be there in four minutes. Is this guy being picketed? Oh no. He added that traffic enforcers are not doing any measures to prevent drivers from entering that apparently exclusive lane for cyclists. Disappointed and frustrated, the motorists blast the scheme, the enforcers, and even gave suggestion on road planning. We shall ask the Taguig City government for reaction and get their side as well regarding this. That's our public service segment this week. And should you yourself encounter motoring problems that need immediate attention, please feel free to contact us. See the details being flashed on your screen. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, please don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 35th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.